The following is a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. Coming up next on Amazing Facts Presents... If the Almighty was going to change one of the laws that right in the middle of His covenant, don't you think you'd see something very prominent in the New Testament that says, by the way, I've changed the Sabbath day to the first day of the week. It's not there, friends. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. I have preached in hundreds of different churches, many different denominations. And again, I want to emphasize godly, good people in many different churches. I believe that. I believe they love the Lord. The Lord's working in their lives. He's answering their prayers. He's working through them. But I've discovered something that's suspicious. I could stand up in, and I've preached in many Baptist churches, and I could preach on virtually any commandment. I could preach on honor your father and mother, and don't steal, don't lie, don't covet, don't use God's name in vain. Don't worship idols. And they'd all say, Amen. But then I could say, Remember the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. And they'll say, Don't put us under the law. We're under grace now. And I think there's something strange that people are especially uncomfortable with this one commandment. You know what it is? Sometimes it's easier for us to give God our money than to give Him our time. Benjamin Franklin said, Time is the stuff that life is made of. God so loved the world, he gave his son for 33 and a half years. He gave us his time. He wants us to give us, him our time to show that we love him. And see, that's how you show you love somebody, by giving them your time. Question number six. What day did Jesus keep holy? Christians, a follower of Christ. Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was... He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. Now, is a custom something you do once or twice? Or is it a pattern? It was the custom of Jesus. Now, friends, if ever you're in doubt about what to do, what is a Christian? A follower of Christ. Do the safe thing. When I went through this issue, finally it occurred to me, hey, when you're in doubt, do what Jesus did. I know in the judgment day when I stand before the Lord, the Lord is not going to say to me, Doug, I'd like to, I'd like to let you into the kingdom, but I can't. Why, Lord? Because you kept the Sabbath day. I'll say, but it was one of the Ten Commandments, Lord. You spoke it with your voice. You wrote it with your finger, and your son did it as an example. Obviously, there must be something behind it that many are missing. And I... I can hear the wheels turning right here in Manhattan and around the country. People are going, Doug, this is making sense, but why do so many Christians worship on the first day or other days? We'll get to that. Don't worry. Number seven, what was Paul's custom regarding the Sabbath? Did he have a pattern? You can read it in the Bible. And Paul, as his custom was, he went to them and three Sabbath days he reasoned with them out of the Scripture. Acts 18, verse 4, is the second part. He reasoned in the synagogue, what does it say? Every Sabbath. And some people say, and what did he do every Sabbath? He persuaded Jews and Greeks. Some people say, well, the only reason Paul was doing that was because he was just trying to uh, minister to the Jews that were there. You can read in Acts chapter 16, who wrote the book of Acts? Does anyone here know? Luke did. And Luke says, uh, Luke was a Gentile that several years, probably 20 years after Jesus died and ascended to heaven, that they were still keeping the Sabbath day. The Christians gathered at a riverside, a place where prayer was wont to be made. Number eight, did the apostles also meet with the Gentiles on the Sabbath day? Acts chapter 13, verse 42. It says, and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath day. Some of you remember when the Apostle Paul was hunting down Christians before his conversion. Do you know where he went looking for the Christians? It says he entered into the synagogues. Why would he be looking for Christians in the synagogues? Because they were worshiping on the same day that the, uh, the Jews had been worshiping. Number nine, and we'll explain this better 
as time goes on. You'll see how it plays into prophecy. Did Jesus intend for his people to keep the Sabbath after he died for their sins? The Bible tells us in Matthew 24, verse 20, Jesus is predicting this time of trouble and the end of the world. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. God was looking down in time. Jesus said, pray you wouldn't have to flee for your life on the Sabbath day. Now look in Revelation chapter 14. This is not in your lesson. I'm going to give you a little free scripture and you'll see why this is so relevant. Just before a group is identified as having the mark of the beast, Revelation 14, and the wrath of God that pours on those who have the mark of the beast, Revelation 14, okay? And then after that, Jesus is pictured coming in the clouds. Just before that, three angels are seen flying in the midst of heaven with these special messages they proclaim with a loud voice. Incidentally, this prophecy is being fulfilled in your ears right now. What do those angels say? You can read Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7. I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them who dwell upon the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And it goes on to say, And worship Him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs or the fountains of water. This is a direct quote from Exodus 20, the fourth commandment commonly known as the Sabbath commandment because it says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea. You know what the issue in Revelation is? You know what the issue in Genesis was? Who you worship and how you worship. Did you know that? Cain and Abel both claimed to worship the same God. One did it differently. Claimed to worship the same God, Cain killed his brother because Abel was accepted. He did it the way God prescribed. You get to Revelation and it says the beast power compels everybody to do what? To worship. You got the point, friends? In the last days, everybody's going to be worshiping. There'll be two great churches in the world. One is going to be following the wide way to destruction, but they're very religious. They're worshiping. The other is on the narrow road and they will be persecuted. Jesus said the hour is coming when those who persecute you will think they're serving God. And it revolves around who and how and when you worship. That was the issue in Daniel. They had to decide, do we bow to the graven image or do we keep the commandments of God? That was the issue when Daniel was in the lion's den. Do I break the commandment that says don't have other gods or do I pray to King Darius? The issue is who do you obey? Paul says in Romans, You're, you are the servants of the one who you obey. And that's why the devil has tried to mesmerize much of the Christian world, and even some of my Jewish friends don't keep the Sabbath anymore, with the idea that it doesn't matter, it's not relevant. And we think because we can by popular consensus say, nobody's doing it, that God doesn't care. Well, I've got news for you. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, I am the Lord. I change not. It doesn't matter if there's only one person left in the world who is obeying God. God will honor that person. Amen. Just because the whole world turns their back on God and His commandments doesn't make it nullified. It's still intact, friends. He spoke it with His voice. He wrote it with his finger. It's of an eternal, enduring nature. What more could he do? And for some, someone to say that that commandment in the middle of God's law that says, remember, it's the longest of the commandments, has been altered or nullified or uh, deleted from the, the commandment, you better be real sure of your scriptural foundation for that kind of um, supposition or theory. Number 10. Does the Bible teach that God's end time people would also be keeping the seventh day Sabbath holy? Well, let's look at Revelation 12, 17. You tell me what you think. And the dragon, who's that? And the devil was wroth. That means furious with the woman, the church. And he goes to make war with the remnant or remainder of her children. What's the characteristic they have? That keep the commandments of God. Now, does that mean keep some of them some of the time? No, it means keep all of them all of the time. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 5, the Lord is speaking there. I think it's verse 29. Moses says, or God says there, Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all of my commandments always that it might be well with them and their children forever. 
If we're keeping some of them some of the time, everybody does that. I've been in and out of jail and prison, and everybody I ever met keeps some of them some of the time. God wants a people who are consistently surrendered to do His will, right? There needs to be a consistency there. Furthermore, it says in Revelation 14, 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Revelation 22, 14, just before they enter into heaven, it says, blessed are they that do His commandments, that they might have a right to the tree of life and that they might enter through the gates of the city. God pronounces a blessing on those that do the commandments. But you know, when I talk about the Sabbath truth, people get restless. And they think, well, what is this going to mean for me? Friends, you just keep coming and keep listening and trust that if this is the Bible, and I'm inviting you to ask any question you want, if you think you've got a scripture that tells us it doesn't matter, you give it to me, I'll read it to everybody. I've been through this. I've asked all the questions. And you owe it to yourself to hear the whole thing out and then deal with the Lord and say, what do you want me to do about this? But just right now, take the information in and pray about it. Does that sound fair? Be honest with your own soul before you lie to yourself. Number 11. What will all of this... Oh, wait, wait. I want to read a scripture to you. It's in... Uh, there you go. James chapter 2, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's guilty of how much? Does one commandment matter to God? I think it does. All right. Now, number 11. Will all the saved in heaven keep the Sabbath? Isaiah 66, we read... For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it will come to pass that from one Sabbath to another shall all Jews, all, all flesh. Now, friends, I'm not giving the Jews a hard time. I am a Jew, both spiritually and physically. But what I'm trying to emphasize is it's not, the Ten Commandments aren't owned by the Jews. They are the code for God's people. All flesh shall come to worship before me on the Sabbath day in the new earth. Now I want you to think about the pattern that we're seeing here. We saw that God had Adam and Eve keeping it. It was there in Genesis chapter 2 in the Garden of Eden. The patriarchs kept it. We know God's people in the Old Testament kept it. It was commanded for them. We see the apostles and Jesus. It was their custom. We see that we're going to be keeping it in heaven. Doesn't it seem peculiar to you that God would say, what you do between the time of the apostles and the second coming, that doesn't matter. I don't care anymore. That wouldn't be consistent, and our God is very consistent. Amen? Number 12. Can, can we be certain that the present seventh day of the week, or Saturday, is the same Sabbath that Jesus kept holy? Now, this is a common question. People say, well, how do we know what day is the Sabbath day? Uh, it's been changed. The calendar's been changed. And we can't be sure. And time has been lost track of. Have you heard these things before? Oh, uh, you can be sure. First of all, my question would be, well, if you don't know what day Saturday is, then you also don't know what day Sunday is either, right? <laughs> so you got a problem either way. But I think that we can know. Luke chapter 23, the Bible gives you the best answer. It says, and that day was the preparation, or the sixth day, where they prepared for the Sabbath, and the Sabbath drew on. And it says, and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Now, I don't want to rush on to the rest of the answer without emphasizing something you must not miss. Jesus walked with the disciples and taught them for three and a half years. After three and a half years at his side, when he died on the cross and the sun was going down and they had not yet finished preparing his body, rather than do something they thought would disappoint their Lord, they laid his cold body in the tomb. They said, we do not have time before the Sabbath to finish anointing his body. They went home and they kept the Sabbath according to the commandment. If Christ had been teaching them that it didn't matter or it was insignificant or not important, then why would they neglect this labor of love right here at the end of his ministry. Of course Jesus endorsed the Sabbath day. As a matter of fact, Christ died before the Sabbath began and rested from his work of saving the human race and then rose Sunday morning to continue his work as our intercessor and high priest. Amen. He even kept the Sabbath in his death. Amen. The idea that Jesus said it was negated or abolished is ridiculous. You go on to the rest of the answer here. Now on the first day of the week, they came to the sepulcher. What day of the week did Jesus rise? We call it Easter Easter Sunday, okay. Now, is it important that Jesus rose Sunday? 
Some people say Sunday is now the Christian Sabbath because Jesus rose that day, and I admit it is important. Baptism is something God gave us to commemorate the resurrection. You'll find no scripture that says, remember the resurrection with a new Sabbath day. There was nothing wrong with the old one. When God made the Sabbath day, was there sin in the world yet? No, it was part of his perfect plan. Now, there were other ceremonial Sabbaths that were established long after yearly Sabbaths that the Jews had, but the Sabbath of the Ten Commandments was part of his perfect plan. There was no need to change it. So let's look real quick at the evidence here. The preparation day, or what we would call the preparation day, is what? Friday. And then, sandwiched between the resurrection, you've got the Sabbath day, or what we commonly call Saturday. And then that's followed, of course, by the first day, or what we have as Sunday. And if you don't believe Pastor Doug, then maybe you should get the dictionary. And in the dictionary, you'll read, seventh day, what does it say? Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Get the encyclopedia out. Some people will say, well, hasn't there been some change in astronomy or the calendar that affects the weekly cycle? Someone wrote a letter to the U.S. Naval Observatory asking that question, and they said, there is no change in the calendar that in any way has affected the continuity of the weekly cycle. You have something in your lesson I hope you'll notice. It's at the very back. There was a change in the calendar in 1582. Pope Gregory XIII made a 10-day adjustment. And the Thursday the 4th of October was followed by Friday the 15th. Well, that might mess up your day planner a little bit, but Thursday was still followed by what? No change in the calendar ever affects the weekly cycle. From the day of Adam to the present, it's been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The weekly cycle doesn't need any changing. Does God allow anyone to change his holy day? Can we change? Can man change the law of God? The Bible says, every word of God is pure. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Number 14, when does the Sabbath begin and end? Leviticus chapter 23, verse 32. It's not at midnight. They didn't keep time that way. The Bible says, from even unto even you shall celebrate your Sabbath. Now, some of you are shocked and you're not saying the answers with me. I still want you to call out the answers. Did you do your lessons? Oh, good for you. And I hope you at home, you can still, those of you watching on TV, call out the answers. Mark 1.32, and at even when the sun was set. How many of you speak different languages here? More than one language. Several of you. Okay. Are you aware that in 105 languages of the world that the word for the seventh day of the week is Sabbath day? Spanish? Sabado. Russian? Subota. I remember I was in Russia. And uh, I went back there and talked to our translators, and one after another, they're going, yeah, Sabbath day, Sabbath day, Sabbath day, in all these various languages. The seventh day of the week, or what we call Saturday, is Sabbath day. Why do you think that is? Because at the Tower of Babel, they weren't that far back from Adam and Eve. They all knew what God's holy Sabbath was. It was one of the Ten Commandments, and there were still people back then honoring that. Number 15, what day is the Lord's day that we read about in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10? Some people say, yeah, Doug, you can go ahead and you keep your Sabbath day, but I'm going to keep the Lord's day, which is the first day of the week. Show me a scripture that calls the first day of the week the Lord's day. Let's find out what the Bible says is the Lord's day. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. That's one. There are several others. It goes on to say, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on, what does he say? My holy day. God there in Isaiah calls the Sabbath my holy day. Then you go to Mark chapter 2, verse 28. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath day. All through the Bible, he calls the Sabbath his day. So which day is the Lord's day? The Sabbath day is the Lord's day. Revelation, the vision of that prophecy was given to John as he was resting. They had been compelling him to work in the mines, tradition tells us and he would not work in the Roman mines. He was resting on the Sabbath day. Do you know they tried to kill the Apostle John? Tradition tells us it's not in the Bible. Diocletian, the Roman emperor, tried to place him in boiling oil to execute him. And they say that he stepped in as though he was stepping into a warm bath and stepped out completely unharmed. They were afraid to do anything else to hurt 
the Apostle John, so they exiled him to the island of Patmos, where they worked him in the mines, 90 years of age, but they did let him rest on his Sabbath. That's why it makes sense that he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Amen. He got the revelation vision on the Sabbath day. You'll find out how important it is as we go on. Number 16, what blessing is promised by the Sabbath commandment? Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The letter of the law, remember what we learned last night about the letter of the law? The letter of the law says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you should work and do all your labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you should not do any work. You or your son or your daughter, your manservant or your maidservant, or your oxen or your cattle, for in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, and he rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord hallowed the Sabbath day and blessed it. Now the Lord is telling us that he wants us to not only keep the letter of the law, but you come to Jesus and you get spiritual rest. That's the spirit of the law. But when we keep the spirit, does it negate the letter? No. Exodus 33, 14. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And then Hebrews chapter 4 verse 5, if they enter into my rest, and the word there for rest is sabbatismos. It means Sabbath rest. Some people say we don't need to keep the Sabbath, Doug, because in Romans chapter 14, Paul says, one man regards the day unto the Lord, another man does not regard the day. Let each man be persuaded in his own mind. Keep in mind there are two kinds of Sabbaths that are spoken of in the New Testament. The Sabbath of the Ten Commandments is part of the moral law, the Ten Commandments, written by God's finger in stone, placed in the Ark of the Covenant, spoken by God's voice. There were several Jewish ceremonial Sabbath days you can find in Leviticus chapter 23. They passed away, they were nailed to the cross. Paul is talking about these ceremonial Sabbaths. He wasn't speaking of one of the Ten Commandments when he says, if you want to keep it, help yourself. If you don't, that's fine too. He's talking about the ceremonial Sabbaths. Somebody else is going to quote you in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 through 16, where it says, let no one judge you. As a matter of fact, I want to read that for you regarding meat and drink or Sabbath days. He's talking about the ceremonial Sabbaths. Turn in your Bibles quickly. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. And it says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, taking it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. What were the ceremonial laws written on? Parchment or paper. They were nailed to the cross. You can't nail stone to anything. Notice it says the handwriting. What is that handwriting that it's speaking of? It's talking about what Moses wrote against us. Deuteronomy 31.26. You write that down and look it up. Take this book of the law, it's talking about the ordinances, and put it in the side of the ark, not in with the Ten Commandments of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it might be a witness against us. Paul is talking about a law that was against them. It's the ceremonial law. Second Chronicles chapter 33 verse 8. They will take heed to do all that I have commanded them according to the whole law, then the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. Handwriting, ordinances that were against us. All of these words are talking about the ceremonial law. Paul is using these phrases in Colossians 2. He's not saying that Sabbath commandment was nailed to the cross because if he is saying that, that would be the most inconsistent thing in the world for God to take the one commandment that begins with the word remember out of the middle of that stone tablet and say, uh, we don't need rest anymore. Or he's changed it to another day. Would that be fair for the government to suddenly change the speed limit to 10 miles an hour and not notify the people? And give everybody tickets and say, well, we didn't tell you, but we're giving you a ticket. When a government changes a law, they're responsible to carefully advertise it to the constituents. If the Almighty was going to change one of the laws that right in the middle of His covenant, don't you think you'd see something very prominent in the New Testament that says, by the way, I've changed the Sabbath day to the first day of the week. It's not there, friends. You're wondering what happened? We're going to tell you what happened. Most of all, I want you to know, the bottom line is, don't worry about these things if you've not accepted Jesus. You're not saved by keeping any of the commandments. 
you're saved by virtue of faith through grace. But if you love the Lord, you're going to want to please Him. That's what our next slide talks about. What does Jesus say? If you love me, keep my commandments. He's not saying if you love me, honk your horn. He's saying if you love me, give me your time. Because time is the stuff that life is made of. The Lord wants to have your hearts and your minds and your lives. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these important messages. God knows how important it is for you to have a clear mind to comprehend what the Spirit is saying to you. It's a doctrine of devils that what you eat and what you drink has no effect on your spiritual sensibilities. The Lord wants you to have good judgment and health cannot be separated from that. Journey back through time to the center of a universe. Discover how a perfect angel transformed into Satan, the arch-villain. The birth of evil, a rebellion in heaven, a mutiny that moved to earth. Behold the creation of a beautiful new planet and the first humans. Witness the temptation of evil. Discover God's amazing plan to save his children. This is a story that involves every life on Earth. Every life. The Cosmic Conflict. If God is good, if God is all-powerful, if God is love, then what went wrong? Available now on DVD. Hi friends, I imagine some of you might find it shocking to learn that most modern churches have totally disregarded or distorted the fourth commandment. What's more, they've replaced it with man-made traditions. But this just underscores the importance of knowing the rest of the story about God's holy day of rest. We'd like to send you today's book offer that will help you study this subject. It's titled, The Law and the Sabbath and I know that you'll be blessed as you study the blessed day. This offer is yours today for a donation of any amount. We're gonna trust the Holy Spirit will guide you. Please call the toll-free number on your screen right now and ask for offer number 1011. Or if you prefer, you can simply write us at Amazing Facts, offer number 1011, P.O. Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. Of course, you can also use the website. It's amazingfacts.org. Well, our time is up for this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Remember, Jesus said, Come unto me, and I will give you rest. This is your opportunity to take advantage of this week's special offer. Just call the toll-free number on your screen and be sure to note the offer number when you make your request. You may also visit our website at amazingfacts.org. Thank you for watching Amazing Facts Presents. The preceding was a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated.